Hi, everyone. I'm Yi. Oh, sorry. I come from Angular team. My topic today is testing best practice for Angular app. Uh, before we start talk, I'd like to ask a question. Why do we write test? Well, someone probably say, because my boss asked me to do that. I have no choice. <laughs> right? Well, that's probably true. And others might say, I want to have a better app. I want to make my user happy. That's great. That's probably our ultimate goal. But if you ask me, I will say, well, I just don't want my new fancy feature was ruined by a sim seemingly safe checking. I also don't want to debug for bug for the whole week, even though even even though a unit it can be detected by a unit test of five lines. Actually, I just want to make myself happier. I write tests for myself. Okay, let's start it. First, let's take a look at what we have in Angular. The first thing is unit test. And it's mainly testing the isolated small piece of code. And in general, we should have most of our tests, most of our tests should be unit tests because it will be run faster and it's easy to debug. The next thing is end to end tests. It's mainly focused on testing the whole workflow. And actually, we shouldn't have lots of end to end tests, but each of them should be a good representation of the real user scenario. And we also have Angular CLI support for testing. For unit tests, it can generate a template unit test file for each newly generated component. And it can also collect unit tests and run camera and display the testing results on page. The next thing is end to end test. It can also generate protractor config. It can also collect tests and run tests. OK, that's all the utility we have. And then let's look at, take a look at each test in detail. OK, first, let's start with the unit test. Well, asynchronous tests. Actually, async test is a common difficulty we face today. And Angular, by nature, has lots of async tasks. So we will mainly focus on that. Uh, mainly, we have three kinds of async tasks. The first one is promise. And the second one is timer, like set timeout and set interval. The third one is XHR. Since most of Angular XHR were made by HTTP client, so we will mainly focus on that. OK, the first thing. Promise. Promise is the most common async task. And even some other async tasks like timer or XHR may, may, might also be promise based. To illustrate this, we have a demo for this. Actually, it's a very simple demo. We call it delayed echo server. As you can see, we have an input field, we have an echo field. When we input something, and it will be echoed to the echo field. Instead of echo it directly, we add a set timeout at a one second delay to make it async. You can see the animation, it will sound like this. OK? Let's start to test. How to test that? First thing, we just send keys to the input field. And then we can wait for Angular to be stable. And then we detect changes. And then we check whether the echo is correct. OK, looks good. We can run the test. See, the test passed. But does it really work? If we change the expectation to run content and test it again, let's see the result. Well, the test still passed. What's going wrong here? Actually, the test just completed too early, even before our async test was completed. So how to handle this? 
The first thing we can do is use Jasmine Dan. Jasmine provides a way to let us to, to tell Jasmine when the test is completed. We need to pass the Dan to our test function and call Dan when we know the test is completed. And then we can run the test again. Great. The test starts to fail. OK? Then we can change, the, change it to the right expectation and test again. Cool. The test works. But is there any problem with this? OK. Let's take a look at this. What if our test somehow throw an error? That test, what happened? Oh, the test can still fail. That's great. But the error message is timeout. Well, it somewhat makes sense because our done callback won't have a chance to be completed. But it's not the error message we want, right? How to handle this? Well, one thing we need to do is we need to cache the exception and pass the message error to Dandor fail. So we test it again, it can show the right error message. Well, it works. But as we can see, to achieve this, we have to add lots of extra lines of code, right? We had to add the Dan, add cache, and the Dandor fail is easy to forget. Do we have an easier way to do that? The answer is yes. In Angular, we provide the async helper, which can automatically wait for all the tasks inside Angular Zone. What we need to do is just put our task inside the async, async function, and then the task can pass. And it uh, can also, if there's an exception in that task, it uh, also shows the correct error. That's cool. Uh, but is there any problem with this? OK, let's take a look at What if we have several steps? Say, we will send keys, send any com at the first time, and then we send is, and then we send great. Well, the task, the task can still pass. But as you can see, even though we just have three send keys, the code is already looks messy. The good news is, we have async await right now, and it was supported in TypeScript. It does provide the functionality of process chain with cleaner syntax. OK, let's take a look at what it looks like in test. To do it, first, we need to add async keyword to the function. Recall what we have before. For the async helper, it will somewhat look like this. Actually, the async helper is a function, but for now, it's a keyword that's different. OK? We just send keys and await Angular to be stable. When we have a await keyword here, it will pause the execution until the promise is resolved. OK? And then we take changes, we check the test. OK? Everything works well. And code looks much nicer. OK? That's great. The next thing is timer. Probably we can use the same way to test timer. Say we use async wait, we use when stable. But the one problem is if we test like this, we have to wait the timer to be triggered. Say we have to wait maybe actual two seconds or something like that. It will be slower. Another thing is sometimes we won't have more precise time control. OK, let's take a look at demo. This we call debounced echo server. Actually, it just looks the same as before, but instead of calling a set timeout, we have a, we add a debounced time here. So we can show the animation. It will some look, what looks like this. The echo won't be updated until we stop typing for 500 milliseconds. OK? How to test that? Well, we need to make sure it won't be echoed if we stop, if, if we, we stop less than debounce time. And it should be echoed if we stop greater or equal to debounce time, which means we need ac accurate time control, right? 
So in Angular, we provide a helper called fake async. Everything is synchronous in fake async zone, and it's mainly used for testing timers. And it will be faster, and we have, have more precise time control. OK, let's see how it will look like. Well, first thing, we need wrapper test in fake async, and then we can use tick to advance the virtual clock. OK. Let's see a demo how it works. Well, it's actually the camera page, and we can use the, debug, the development tool to see how it looks. Uh, the first thing, we just send keys, and you can see the keys is updated in the input field. That's great. And then we take 499 milliseconds. Well, it's less than 5 milliseconds. And then we detect changes. You can see the echo is, doesn't, doesn't update it. That's great. Then we can send another key. We send is. Input is updated. We take 100 milliseconds, and then we detect changes. The echo is not updated either. Well, that, that's great. Because even though 499 plus 100 is greater, is greater than 500, but since we send another new key, the timer should be reset. OK, we keep sending keys, like we send grid here, and take 500 milliseconds this time, and we detect changes. Cool. And the echo is updated. We can keep doing this. We send another keys. We take 1,000 millisecond time and detect changes, and echo is updated again. That's great. OK. Uh, the last thing is XHR. One possible solution is to use Jasmine Spy. We can spy on XHR and replace it with a mock response. But, well, it works. But if we do that, we cannot text the actual HTTP request because it was replaced. How can we do that? Instead, Angular provides a helper called HTTP testing controller. We can use that so when we, our test can set actual HTTP request and it will be intercepted by the testing controller with a mock response. OK, let's see what it looks like. We have another demo to show this. Instead of getting the echo data from an input field, we get it from a JSON file. We make an extra here. Say if we click the fetch data button, it will be echoed here. OK? In general, if we want to use HTTP testing controller, we need import HTTP client testing module so that we can retrieve the HTTP testing controller from injector. OK? In our test, it's just simple. First, we need to click the button, and then it will send out the XHR. And then the XHR will be intercepted by our controller. And then we can check whether it really, really sent out the XHR to this specific URL. And then we can flash our request with a mock response. And then we just do the same thing that detect changes and check whether the echo text is correct. OK, it works. That's really cool, right? We can test everything we want to test here and avoid have really internet traffic. OK. Also, we also want to make sure we have already tested all the HTTP requests. So we can have a verify here in the after each section. OK. To summarize, for promise, we prefer use async await. For timer, we'd like to use fake async. For testing XHR, we prefer using HTTP testing controller. OK. If you want to know more about unit test, you can watch this talk. It will happen tomorrow, present by Courtney. OK, that's a nice talk. OK. Then let's talk about end to end test. In Angular, we have an end to end test framework called Protractor. 
It was built on top of WebDriver. It has some Angular-specific rotators, and it can automatically wait for Angular. Okay. One thing we need to realize is all the WebDriver calls are async in protractor. So promise chain are not feasible. Why? If we do that, we will have a really, really long promise chain, right? So previously, we have a mechanism called control flow. It will queue all of the pending promises and run them sequentially. Well, it works. But the problem is, actually, the actual execution time of each web driver call is not the time when the program hits that line of code, because that code was queued and delayed, right? So which make most of development tool, uh, most of debug tool won't work. So it's hard to debug. And for the same reason, it's being deprecated, and we don't, actually we don't have it in Selenium 4. Since we already have async await, and it can solve the problem of promise chain, and it's easy to debug, we should start to move to async await. Just one thing to keep in mind, we cannot mix, mix async await and, and the control flow at the same time. So to use async await, the first thing we need to do is debug control flow, disable control flow. We need to modify or protector config, and then just use async, async await in the test. We have async keyword, and await every web driver calls. Okay. If you want to know more about protractor, you can also take a look at this talk. It was presented by Michael and Craig. It's pretty good. Okay. Okay. Let's take a look, quick, quick look at what we'll, we, we will have in the future. The first thing is oh, first thing is AOT test. Well, what is AOT test? It's use AOT mode, which is ahead of time compilation in unit test. It will serve the compiled templates in test, so it will be much faster and more stable. The more important thing is it will closer to what is served in production. Okay. Next thing is component harness. What is that? It's a page object framework for components. And it can be composable like components. One more thing is it can be shared between unit tests and end-to-end -end tests, which means we can just write one page object. It can be used in both unit tests and end-to-end -end tests. OK, to summarize what we have today. Angular CLI provide a good support for testing, and we have lots of helpers for different testing scenarios. So let's start to red test and make our life happier. Okay, thank you.